Good morning. Uh, my name is Caroline Curry, and I am the Row Crop Marketing Manager for Verdesian Life Sciences. I am delighted to have this group assembled this morning to talk a little bit about an exciting technology that we're launching formally in 2021, Seed Plus Graphite uh, at Verdesian Life Sciences, but excited to bring together the team from Cytozyme Technologies and Verdesian to talk a little bit about what is so unique about Seed Plus Graphite and also what this innovative partnership can really mean for both businesses. Uh, to kick us off this morning, I'd love to just go around the horn and do a round of introductions. First and foremost, thank you all very much for making the time to be a part of this. Uh, I'm excited to really give some answers uh, around the uniqueness of this technology to the American farmer. So maybe we'll begin with Rick yeah, thanks, Caroline, and, and really excited to be with the team this morning uh, today talking through C++ Graphite. Uh, I'm Rick Rigner, the Executive Vice President for Strategy and Business Development at Verdesian. I've been with the company for three years now, and what brought me in here uh, was really a stint I did in consulting with McKinsey & Company. I spent four years there working on mergers and acquisitions and commercial transformations, and one of my last clients was Verdesian Life Sciences. So I was a consultant for Verdesian for about a year before joining the company and was really excited by what I saw with the platform they had for products, with the strategy they had around nutrient use efficiency, uh, and then more importantly, the people that they were bringing in. So decided to join Verdesian full-time in January of 2018. Wonderful. Thank you. Adam, how about you? Good morning, everyone. My name is Adam Blaschek, and I'm the director of R&D here at Cytosign. Uh, what brought me to Cytozyme, it's actually a very similar story to what Rick described. I was uh, part of Innova Bio, which is a contract research organization, and we were doing uh, contract research for local biotech companies. So this was around 10 years ago, and Cytozyme knew a lot about how the product works on uh, chemical level, on plant physiology level, and they contracted us to look at the molecular level. And we, we found some really exciting things and uh, then uh, got excited about the product. And we presented the data at the conference and friends and um, Cytozyme decided to break, bring this technology in-house and, and started working for Cytozyme, discovering new uh, modes of actions, new products. And uh, this is awesome. It's really exciting because I love to apply the, the hot, cutting edge technologies from my previous engagements and my entire scientific career, career, I've been studying how genes are being regulated. And it was with, uh, in England, Poland, Switzerland, I was doing some research on, on bacteria and how bacteria respond to stress. And then later on here in Utah also, and, and cancer, um, uh, looking how those processes are actually going uh, wrong. So it was exciting to bring all those technologies, cutting edge technologies that are used for big pharma to, uh, to agriculture to help the farmers understand. Excellent, thank you. Mike, how about you? Good morning, everybody. It's great to be here. My name is Mike Kennedy and I am the technical support director with Cytozyme. Been with Cytozyme a little over five years and my background is as a, as a commercial plant breeder um, working in all many different crops in uh, the Western United States. And um, it, it was a very interesting journey from plant breeding over to working with the biologicals because, you know, I noticed over the years that one of the, you know, we, we, we couldn't cover everything. You know, when you develop new varieties and, you know, you, you stack all these traits, there's a lot of things that are just, are just out of your control. And this is one of the exciting things that I that I found about this the seed technology that we're going to we're going to talk about today. Um, it's just simply some of these traits just aren't 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 your breeders aren't able to to put them into um, to elite varieties. So we're gonna. It, it, I've been very excited and very enthusiastic about some of the results we've we've seen with this technology. But um, yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. Excellent, thanks. All right, Dave, would you mind giving a brief intro? I'd love to, thanks. <laughs> David Bitter, my background uh, is uh, corporate finance and operations role, Ford Motor Company, 
Honeywell, Allied Signal, Black & Decker, was recruited into um, Cytosign to help the transformation of the business from a science-based company. We were companies really internally focused. We were all about the science, publishing papers, uh, being the world leader in uh, biological um, biostimulants area. And uh, over the last course of the last 60 years, we've moved uh, to more of a commercial focus, strengthened our presence in, in 33 countries. And I really echo Rick, it's um, you work with people you like. Uh, you know, we've got a credible group um, and we have a tremendous product portfolio, makes a difference. And so that's kind of a magic combination with the right people. So that's why I'm here. You bet. Thank you. And last but not least, Mr. Mike Zwingman, would you give us a, a little background on yourself? Yeah, so uh, I'm, I come from 20 years of retail ag experience, uh, working with farmers every day out in the field and really spent my career trying to help them get the most out of every acre and kind of push that envelope of, of yield ex exploitation and finding the next new product that works for them and really starting with their problem and working to the solution and and really finding the great products that help our growers achieve their goals. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so if you're watching this morning or uh, whenever you have access to this conversation, we've really tried to assemble a team here that represent the uh, robust science expertise that played into the development of the Cytozymes technology uh, that we use as a part of that seed plus graphite product as well as folks that would have a lot of uh, experience within building our commercial business at the Verdesian Life Sciences team and real world application at the farm level. And so hopefully we're able to uh, shed a little light on the uniqueness of this product and what it can bring to the acre. To kick us off, I thought we'd start maybe with you, Rick. So those watching may have noticed there was some pretty exciting news about a new investor for Verdesian Life Sciences this week. And so before we get into some of the nitty gritty on the seed plus graphite product, I just wanted to ask, what does this really mean for the innovation pipeline at Verdesian and partnerships like the one that we have with Cytozymes? Yeah, Carolyn, it was exciting news and uh, Verdesian is very excited about it. And I think partners like Cytozyme echo that excitement. Uh, so on January 19th, we, we publicly announced that AEA Investors uh, has put a significant investment into Verdesian. I think what's interesting to talk about here is, uh, it, you know, AEA has been very engaged in this process over the past six or so months, um, and they're investing in Verdesian. They're investing in the platform that we've created uh, and investing to help us accelerate our nutrient use efficiency mission into agriculture. So we're not taking a big deviation off the plan. Uh, this is meant to really bolster and accelerate that. Uh, there'll be a lot more to come over the next couple months that will be very visible to the market, but some things to keep an eye out for. Uh, first and foremost are some acquisitions. Uh, we have a few targets uh, that are very closely aligned with us right now that we think can help bolster our portfolio in the nutrient use efficiency space, uh, but then also give us some opportunities internationally, uh, which are critical for our business. Uh, and then second, this new investor is going to help us uh, really on two fronts where we think uh, we've got some opportunities. That's to kind of accelerate and get more broad with our marketing efforts, uh, which I think we're all excited about in Carolina. I know that excites you. Yes. Uh, and then also uh, accelerate and fund our research and development team. We've got a very strong pipeline of products uh, that are being launched this year that are in the coming years, and we need some money behind those to make sure we get the most robust, yield, efficient, whatever you want to call it, products out to the market and, and to the growers. So the end game here is, is to really build a nutrient use efficiency, uh, become a much more strategic partner um, to all of our different customers through the agriculture channel. Uh, but really be a more robust supplier uh, all the way to the grower farmer. Thank you, Rick. That's really helpful. Uh, I will go ahead and address the, the elephant in the room. I know several farmers have been asking after the announcement, seeing the robust list of companies that AEA has invested in in the past, 
uh, they notice Traeger on the list. So can our farmer customers expect that they'll be receiving a Traeger grill with Verdesian purchases in the future? Yeah, that's a good question for Dave. I, I think Dave, <laughs> uh, you, you know, he's got the deep pockets there. Yeah, you know, I think with, um, you know, in all seriousness, there, there probably will be some fun spiffs and, and things like that that we'll be able to do to, to you know, get more awareness of our products in the field and, and reward people for using our products, uh, especially those that not just use our products, but help share the message uh, of what our products are delivering at the field level. So I'd say, uh, yeah, there's some things to come. And, and if you've got the email address of Caroline, I'd, I'd hit her at <laughs> better because Caroline will be the gate holder. Or the key. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate that. Well, that sets us up well as we think about, you know, really investing in new innovative products at Verdesian. Dave, I was hoping you could give us a little bit of background on the Cytozyme story and really the origin story of how you came to develop this technology pipeline um, and, and brought the team together to work on this effort. You bet. Hey, first of all, congratulations to the Verdesian team with AEA. I mean, that's a blue chip partner um, to help the company grow in the future. I mean, Traeger is part of that. At Home Group is part of that group. And um, uh, CEO of At Home is a friend of mine and uh, nothing but uh, accolades uh, for AEA. Uh, in any event, Side Design Story is a great story. Um, I, it's one worth sharing. Mm -hmm. You know, and it goes back, it's not a short story. It's 45 years old where a handful of biologically derived compounds were seen from observation to have an effect on, on plants. Metabolic activity immediately, of course it shows up in yield uh, in um, the product quality of plants and also just the vigor of plants. And uh, instead of just going out and trying to market it and sell it, Cytozyme became inwardly focused uh, for decades. Uh, and it was kind of like, I'd kind of like draw a parallel to Ferrari motor car. You know, Ferrari was all about the racing business. I think we are all about the research. And so instead of hiring salespeople, we hired scientists, biochemists, molecular biologists. Adam is a molecular biologist, plant breeders. Mike's a plant breeder, uh, plant physiologist. And uh, as a result of that, uh, we became the darling of the scientific community. And so for the biostimulant coalitions in Europe or in the U.S., you know, it was all about publishing papers. We have more posters and papers than you can, than you can count around the effects of uh, biologicals and the metabolic activity of a plant and how that maps out to yield, et cetera. So that's the story. So the inwardly focused uh, business, uh, we became all interested about our craft and uh, sold just enough product to frankly stay alive. And so in the last decade, um, we started to move uh, the focus outward. We were discovered by companies along the way opportunistically. We're in 33 countries. Um, in some countries, we have deep um, penetration, um, like uh, um, 60, 70% penetration in some crop types, but it's never been part of a organized marketing effort. So in the last uh, few years, we've become um, more market focused. North America, finding the right partners. Uh, Verdesian is the right partner, um, you know, for Cytosine. Uh, in some countries, we uh, deal with regional partners and some it's multinationals, um, the names that you would you'd recognize. But in any event, uh, as a result of that, here we are 45 years later, um, and we have um, 118 different formulations. Um, and of course, just like any company, there's about 20 of them that really carry um, the volume activity around um, soil health, you know, seed emergence, um, nutrient efficiency, um, and um, mitigation of uh, biological um, abiotic stresses uh, to plants. It's a broad solution from soil to shelf. And so we're really excited about a partnership with Verdesian because we really fit hand in glove uh, in this relationship. It's kind of, frankly, it's just kind of fun. <clears throat> Wonderful. Thank you. Well, so I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you mentioned you've got a, a wide variety of technologies that are in that, um, you know, science driven technology um, pipeline. But I want to speak a little bit about the, the modes of action that are used in the Seed Plus Graphite product. So 
you know, Michael and Adam, I know that you both have probably the most experience with, um, you know, the back end vetting of these technologies and the, the selection of, of strains or um, components that would go into seed plus graphite. Can you just, one of you maybe speak to how does this technology actually work? Um, the mode of action, the, the mechanism that brings us that enhanced yield outcome. Mike, maybe you can start with kind of giving a background on the, the problem that exists in this because the modes of action, they don't exist in vacuum and it's why we're doing this. Yeah, so why don't I, why don't I touch on that? Um, this is a really interesting uh, topic and I think it's what really sets apart Cytozyme and, and this product specifically. But really, there is never a perfect situation when a, a, a farmer, it's an open biological system, there's always, there's stresses that, 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 that you know, that, that happen in the field. And especially if we're talking specifically about this seed technology, there's just a lot of stresses in those early, early parts of the, of the growth cycle. So stresses, they, you know, they really, they, re, they reduce yield, they reduce quality. And there's been a lot of studies that have been done where you're at any given time, um, a, a variety, and we're talking, you know, any type of crop variety, we're only, you're only achieving just a small fraction. You know, I think it's been estimated less than a, less than a quarter of the, the full genetic potential of a crop. And the majority of that, that potential, that yield, that quality loss happens because of stress. And Dave mentioned a couple types of stresses, but mostly it's abiotic stress. So heat, um, cold, drought, um, agrochemical stress, these all, these all affect the plant. They all affect the developing seedling. And um, one, of the, one of the results of that within the crop is the overproduction of these reactive oxygen, oxygen species. And um, what, we, what we focus on is how to alleviate, how to reduce the presence of those reactive oxygen species that are gonna reduce the yield and quality of the crop. This product really, it works for you, Caroline, you mentioned about modes of action and Adam, and Adam's gonna go into a little bit more detail about, about how this works, but there's really, there's two modes of action in, the, in this product and how we deal with these reactive oxygen species. You know, we, we talk about antioxidants in, in, in relation to human nutrition, how they, they help um, with, uh, you know, with these free radicals, you know, these different, different type things. Crops are the same way, plants are the same way. And with this product, with this technology, we see two, two ways of dealing with this. There's in the product itself, there, is, there are antioxidants that actually will immediately take, to, take uh, and reduce those, those free radicals. On top of that, there's also a way that the plant is, is able to produce its own, its own um, antioxidant, its own, and, and reduce the presence of those free radicals. Um, but maybe Adam, you can, you can maybe talk a little bit more about, um, about some, of, some of those mechanisms. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I and mean, this is, uh, you did a great job kind of building the background for this because uh, we're, we're helping farmers with a very specific problem from the situation that it's, it's, it's impossible for the farmers to control. The abiotic stress, the, the forces of nature, uh, as Mike said, it's never perfect in the field. And there's always this, some sort of an imbalance between anti, uh, the antioxidants keep the balance in check, but also those free radicals, the reactive oxygen species, they get out of balance and they are the ones that are causing damage and eventually lead to lowering of the quality of crops and the quantity, so the yield. And that's where we can help. And we like to put it in those uh, two well-defined uh, modes of action. So the first one, as Mike said, is um, we can very specifically measure this for this colorimetric reaction where we look at the product itself and we we were able to compare it to other uh, competitor products. And we're seeing, Caroline, amazing 10 times higher activity of antioxidants in the, the product itself. And I like it because Dave always likes to use this uh, comparison to, to a fire extinguisher. And that's what you need when there's a fire. You need to 
take out the fire immediately. So when you apply the product, imagine you have 10 times higher power of antioxidants that can balance out the, those free radicals that are caused by the stress, as Mike said. Well, then uh, later on, once you take care of this most immediate uh, need, uh, what is exciting, and that's where I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled to share this technology because that's what I've been studying my entire life, that the product is actually um, eliciting response in the plants. So it's, 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 it's making plants stronger, but it's doing this through tapping into its natural uh, ways of defending itself. And this, this, I think it's, it's really important to stress here that it's all natural processes and the technology of cytozyme, it's tapping through the process, it's, it's proprietary process of fermentation. We're pretty much taking uh, microbes on this journey in our manufacturing processing, and we're just tapping into this power of thousands of years of co-evolution of plants and microbes, bacteria. And we're using natural mechanisms in the plants that we are defining as the second mode of action. So we're seeing in, in some of the experiments that we ran on, on, on corn, that it's over 1,000 genes, Caroline, over 1,000, it's, it's specifically 1,180 something genes that we're seeing that the product um, affects as far as expression. So we're on this deep, deep level, molecular level uh, upon application upon treatment of the seed at those early stages of the seedlings, we're affecting genes and those genes are not some random genes. And this is where I get really excited because it's, it's a really cool story. We, we, those genes fall into uh, very specific four categories of uh, metabolic processes. Uh, <clears throat> so without uh, getting too deep into the science, but the first one is photosynthesis, genes that are involved in photosynthesis. And then we know how important photosynthesis is, photosynthesis is for those um, growing seedlings. So it's, it's the supply of energy, carbohydrates to the seedling. The seedling is starving for the energy and it needs to uh, use it to grow. And the carbohydrates, the next group of genes, those are the building blocks and structural components of the cell wall and also the um, storage and delivery of energy. Then uh, lipids, so uh, important in cell compartments and func uh, functions of all organelles, energy source once again, uh, and, and uh, metabolic processes, even signaling processes between uh, long distance sequence, uh, long distance signaling and, and, and cells. And then, uh, last but not least, the fourth category is the, the optimization of the redox um, homeostasis. So what Mike was saying, that we're not only delivering antioxidants, but uh, we're uh, allowing plants to make their own antioxidants. So we have groups of genes that are coding for antioxidants that now plant uh, is able to make itself. And we're seeing uh, upregulation of those genes 200 fold. So you're getting all of a sudden 200 times higher effects of antioxidants that allow, I think, for this more extended, um, uh, efficient and, and, and longer effects of the products on, on the plants. All of this helps plants, once again, as Mike said, uh, help fight the negative effects of, of abiotic stress. Wow. Uh, that is a lot to digest, um, but it sounds like obviously, you know, very steeped in years of, of scientific development to bring us here to a, a farmer facing um, ready solution. I want to just quickly, you know, touch on, you mentioned several times about, you know, the different gene categories that it that we this product or the technology influences. Mike, I know you have probably more experience than any of us really measuring and monitoring biological technologies in the field. From a grower perspective, what, what does this mean for them? What should they be looking for over the course of the growing season to really measure efficacy uh, and I know, you know, you and I have had, had personal conversations where we recognize this, this space is very cluttered. Um, I know, you know, in the countryside, the term snake oil gets thrown out a lot. 
I feel like obviously with this team and the history of Cytosyme, that's definitely not where we are, but can you speak to if from a grower perspective, how would you approach measuring and really trying to flesh out the efficacy of a biological technology on the farm throughout the growing season? Yeah, Caroline. So the first thing, if I'm a farmer and I just got done hearing Michael and Adam talk, like I'm Googling some of those terms, right? <laughs> that out but when i'm talking to a grower about biologicals or or products in the space the first thing i i want them to think about is think about the problems you create yourself for the plant right as we're talking about seed plus graphite as growers especially in the corn belt plant earlier and earlier every year we're intentionally putting seeds in tougher conditions right we're in, intentionally inducing some of these abiotic stresses by planting at the very razor's edge of plantability of the, of the soil. And, and so then what we have is we have a plant that isn't as, is in a cooler, wetter environment a lot of times and is experiencing that stress. And what the, what the technology of seed plus graphite is great about, it helps that plant thrive through that stressful situation. So then after we get a grower to use it, the first thing I want them to do is go look at their look at their plantability maps on their monitors over the course of all the trials when we're looking at as planted maps we look at the singulation and spacing with seed plus graphite it is um, almost perfect right like when we're talking 99.7 99.5% singulation and spacings across a wide variety of planters seed sizes planting populations planting speeds vacuum settings the, the, the plantability aspect of seed plus graphite, the, that talc graphite piece, the lubricant, and, and, and it works exactly like we would want to work from a mechanical point of view. So that's step, that, that's step number one. The second thing is then about 21 days after planting or 28 days, I like to take the grower out and I like to do net effective stand percentages. So count all the plants, count all the skips, count all the doubles, count all the runs, and calculate what it, the effective stand is. And do that for treated and untreated. And what we see with seed plus graphite is about a 10 or 11% increase in that net effective stand percentage. So instead of being in the 70s or 80s, we're in the 90s a lot of the time. And then look at the vigor of those plants and, and how we do that is we dig up every fifth plant and we knock the dirt off it and we weigh them on a, on a mass scale, right? And we look at, at plant biomass. And what I want growers to see is that trajectory we start a plant off in that first 28 days is critical for us to achieving max yield. Small roots in a corn plant never get bigger. Big roots can, and big roots will never turn will turn into small roots under you know extreme situations but a small a relatively small root mass never turns into a big root mass a big effective root mass late in the year so when we set that that above ground and that below ground trajectory correctly we not only set the plant up to be max capable of of, of photosynthesis but maximum capable of taking in water and nutrients and then we achieve a sink source balance inside the plant of it being able to capture sunlight and then get the material from the soil that it needs. And that's that, that long-term abiotic stress protection that, that C plus helps us get, right? A bigger, more rigorous plant is gonna be able to handle more stress down the road because we pushed it through the stress early. So when you compare it to other biological products where we can't explain that mode of action and we can't explain what the real benefit to the plant is, that's the difference between the seed plus technology and the backing of those decades of science versus something that's new to the market. Sounds cool, mm -hmm. but it's really hard to measure. If farmers are interested in, um, you know, checking us on some of that plantability uh, data, the, you know, the trials that have been done on singulation, are there any partners that, you know, they, they can look to, to verify um, or, or see that for themselves? Yeah. You know, we've done some work. Um, uh, 
with some with some precision planning dealers and, and we've done some work with some other groups that we can easily share that data um, with with the growers if they're looking for it. Great. Rick, I know that leading our, our business development efforts, especially um, with relation, you know, working very closely with this team at, um, and at Cytozymes, working with the Seed Plus Graphite technology, you're probably hearing from a lot of our partners that did participate in 2020's soft launch with Seed Plus Graphite and really using it for the first time. I'll, I'll toss this to, to you uh, or to Mike. What are we hearing in terms of product results, uh, yield results from the 2020 season? I'll, I'll pass it to Mike in a minute to talk through the results. Um, he'll, he'll have a lot more of the details. Uh, but overall, what we're hearing from our partners is that first, this is a truly unique product. That there's nothing like it in the market today. Um, something that you can put in a planter box that not only brings the micronutrients, but everything that Mike and Adam have talked about uh, it isn't out there. And it is not easy to duplicate a product like this and then get to the point where we are with the plantability data, the yield data, et cetera. Uh, the second thing that we're learning is that this space is very interesting uh, and very intriguing, not only for our distribution and retail partners, but at the grower level. There seems to be a lot of pent up excitement uh, to bring more benefits to the farm out of something that goes in the planter box that people use every day. Um, so if you put those together, we've seen a, a lot of momentum in 2020, um, a lot more than we had even planned for in the spring. And we, we had quite a few sales in, in the spring of 2020. What a lot of people were telling us is that they put some small amounts of the product out into an area. Uh, they wanted to see the plantability for themselves. They wanted to wait till harvest to see what the yield results were. Uh, like Mike talked about, they wanted to see the stand counts, et cetera. Uh, and we're starting to get the feedback even stronger than we expected in regions all across the United States that this product has performed as they expected and in a lot of cases outperformed what the expectations are uh, and were. Uh, so we're riding a big momentum wave right now. This formal launch should only help that in 2021. And the benefit we have is we're riding off of a lot of data that's been accumulated over the past 12 months in the market. And I'll let Mike talk to that. Yeah, so in 2020, um, when we look at yield data on corn, we're looking at right at about a 3.4 bushel yield increase. Um, that's, that's across over 30 sites in the Midwest. Um, with the over a 75% win rate. So when I look at field trials in general with, with row crops, when I get to a 75% win rate, like that's, that's you, you just basically can count on 20% of your trials just aren't gonna work out the way you wanted them to. Like that's just the way it is in field. Um, you know, when we get into the, the more extreme stressful situations where we kind of really intended to plant it, like really intended to put it in that situation, we're seeing eight, 10, 12 bushel yield increases, right? So when we get to those extreme stress situations, we're seeing it do exactly what we wanna do. And for, for, for a product at the, at the price point at which it's at, for the application timing and everything that we have it in and all the other things that could go wrong after it, that three, four bushels exactly where I would expect a product like Seed Plus Graphite to come in and, in, a yield, uh, in a yield response. In soybeans, we're somewhere around that two bushel, same kind of win rates, um, same trial states, you know, over 16 states uh, nationwide that we've tried this. So, I mean, we've literally tried it in, in so many, in enough conditions that we have confidence that we really think it's doing exactly what we say it's doing. And those yield that those yield data points are, are, are as solid as we can get them because it's a cooperation of small plot, small plot trials with uh, contract operators and then real real world situations with farmers doing the work and farmers doing it like they would do it and that's the kind of data I like to see a blend of when we talk about a new product. Yeah, you bet. And Rick, Carol, I can add on to that. Sure. So yeah. To what Mike said because he he brings up another point around the price of this product. And that was critical. We spent a lot of time figuring out where this should be positioned. 
And if you think back to what Mike and Adam talked about, everything that's in this, all the different actives, what it's bringing, if this was a full year applied product, you're talking about a very expensive application on the farm. Uh, we were able to position this on soybeans, for example, at a suggested pricing structure, a little over $3 an acre. Corn, you're looking at probably less than $3 an acre. And on cotton, for example, you could be under $2 an acre. That's before you take out the cost of talc and graphite that growers are likely using today. So take out that cost, net it against the, the prices that I just mentioned. You'd have to talk to your, your dealer to figure out what, what the price is in the area. Uh, but you're getting to a very reasonable price on the farm to get to some of those yields that Mike talked to, to get some of that early emergence, to beat some of those early stresses. And that's another thing that's really putting momentum behind this is the price point. So I just wanted to emphasize that a little bit. Absolutely. No, that's a great point. And I think you also touched on something that is, is pretty unique in the biological space as well, that a grower would be able to very conveniently incorporate this technology at, at the planter box. Um, maybe for, for Adam or Mike, you know, can you speak to how we're able to deliver this kind of a powerful technology in such a convenient delivery mechanism? I, I know a lot of growers that may have dabbled with biological inputs in the past have probably had to deal with, you know, some really sensitive living organisms. Can, can either of you just touch on um, kind of the delivery mechanism, um, mode of application today, which Rick touched on with the planter box treatment and how we're able to deliver such a high value biological input through that system. Yeah, maybe I can touch on that. So this product is, is there, there, it's a bio, we like to say that it's a biologically derived product. So there's no living organisms in, in, the, in, in the final formulation. Um, it's really, it's a combination of these fermentation metabolites that Adam mentioned, some naturally chelated micronutrients and some plant extracts. So, you know, it's, it's a completely shelf stable product that can be applied to the seeds. It's, 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 it's storable. It has, you know, we usually like to guarantee a, at least a three year shelf life of this product but it's very, very easily um, blended and, and applied to the seed. Um, just a very convenient package. And like you mentioned, you know, when, when you're dealing with in, in, this, in the biological space, a lot of times there's products that are very sensitive to temperature, very sensitive to how long after they're applied to the, to the, the plant or the seed that they can actually, they're, they're usable. Um, there's just a lot of flexibility with this product um, that I think combined with the benefits that Rick mentioned, it's a it's a it's a very appealing to uh, to the grower. Awesome, thank you. So you know we've talked a lot about the value of this technology, its uniqueness, what we're hearing from the field. Um, you know, are there any other comments around some of the plant symptomology? Mike, you mentioned obviously checking the monitors, looking, really investigating that plantability piece. Um, for growers that are trying this product for the first time in 2021, for first, first action to, to check our work and make sure that they're really, you know, watching this product throughout the course of the growing season. One, if you're watching this and, and you're in a part of the world that there's growers with experience of, with seed plus graphite, just go talk to the grower, mm. right? And ask them what their experience is. After that, you know, visit our website, uh, contact your retailer, ask for the yield data. Um, we can, we, we'll have those, we're gonna have some trainings with our retailers here shortly to really kind of talk about these points a little bit finer and then just give it a try. Like get the product, get it in your hands and give it a try split. And the easiest way to do it, split your planner in half, right? Cause then I can go, then we can go row by row. We can watch the plantability and you can easily separate that harvest data out. And it, it makes it real simple for you to test that technology. Um, and then do the work after planning, go do some red digs, go dig some plants, go observe what's going on because no matter what happens, the plant never lies to you. Mm. Um, the minute you see 
a visible difference in the plant, the probability of there being a yield difference, a measurable yield difference is somewhere around 60%. So you, you need to just go and, and do the work. And, and we've done things like put game cameras out and those things to, to document that. Um, but really just take the time um, to, to enjoy the process of using C plus graphite and visualize it for yourself because the plant will never lie to you even up to harvest. Awesome. And uh, you mentioned, you know, trying it for yourself um, for growers that have stuck with us and um, joined us for our conversation today. We're going to have an opportunity for that. Before we close, Rick, I'd like to just ask you, you know, one more time as we think about these two organizations, um, the innovation that is occurring between them, Seed Plus Graphite is what we're talking about today, but what does the future have in store? Can you give our listeners a glimpse uh, at the exciting future for these two companies. Yeah, Caroline, in a high level, I would say what people should expect should be a lot. Uh, we have this commercial partnership with Cytozyme underway right now. Uh, what a lot of people don't see is the research and development partnership that we have going in the background. Uh, Cytozyme brings a lot of unique capabilities to Verdesian uh, in their labs, with the people that you've heard from today. So a very unique skill set. And when you combine it with what we have, we can really do some unique things. Uh, in terms of products, what should be expected here in, in the future, I would say in the very near term, look for some products that combine our technologies. They're gonna widen use guidelines. They're gonna bring synergies to the plant, et cetera. Uh, and then in the medium long term, look for some novel technologies to come out of this that aren't in the field today from either company. So as our teams are working together, we're, we're developing those. On the seed plus graphite front, uh, I would say seed plus graphite is just the start for us with a full planter box strategy. Uh, we are going to be the leader in this space and we are going to have different technologies and different uses coming out here in the very near term uh, that should position us with our partners and at the grower level to even bring some level of semi-customization. So I'd keep an eye out for that. Uh, we will be the leader in this space here in the next year or two. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our panelists for taking the time to join us for this conversation this morning. Uh, I'm excited about the future between our two organizations and what that means for farmers.